Okay, so I promised you a detailed comparison between the Sony Xperia X Compact and the Samsung Galaxy A3 2017. And I will give you that because I don't want to break my promise. <laughs> but maybe you have already noticed one thing. I'm wearing my chill hoodie. This means that this thing today will be a little bit more loose and it will be a one take attempt video. Especially since... and. Please don't see this the wrong way, not that I'm not trying to give my best, but I just don't have the time at the moment and not the energy to try to give my best, so no retries and so on, so it is what it is. But therefore you will get all the details that you should want or maybe need, so let's just jump into it. Okay, first of all design and build. As always a quick size comparison, as you can see the Sony Xperia X is actually noticeably shorter. In terms of width, actually, I think also, I didn't really check the measurements, but feels a little bit more narrow, but therefore it's a little bit thicker. Now, in terms of in-hand feel, they are both quite different because this one feels a little bit more premium, just more luxurious with the glass, and it is very comfortable in the hand, and it just definitely is great. The Sony, and it maybe doesn't look like it is, though, almost more comfortable because yes it looks a little bit more bulky and boxy but the rounded curves and the kind of plastic and make it feel so nice and great in the hand and one thing why I like it a little bit more actually even though it has the 4.6 inch screen in, in, instead of the 4.7 I can type on it way easier maybe it's because of the bigger bezel actually and maybe the keyboard sits a little bit better but I can type on this better and also the direction was nicer so I won't really choose a winner here because I don't think it's necessary, but in terms of fingerprint reader, definitely the Sony, because it is pretty much impossible to press the button and not unlock it. This is so convenient, so great, great position, and I like it. Where, and I've said this on my review, the one on the A3 is still a little bit annoying. It works better, but still, I mean better just in terms of the other Samsung ones. So I'm not the biggest fan of that just after all. In terms, I won't really go into all the details in terms of ports and so on, because that doesn't make or break or something else. Like I said, this feels a little bit more premium, but this actually feels a little bit more comfortable to me. Of course, though, you will notice that the plastic back will scratch up, especially if you clean this up. It gets a little bit more obvious, maybe, because I don't think it's that visible on video, but it's something that you have to decide. Now, let me take a look at the display now. So. I said that I love the one on the Sony, and I, let me actually get those in the right order. But they are both calibrated at the moment to 140 lux. So pretty much should be the same, even though maybe it doesn't seem like it on the video. But I gotta say, the Samsung Galaxy A3 has a wonderful display, but the one on the Sony for some reason just fits my my preference a little bit more because it feels a little bit more popping colors actually not that they see maybe as you can see a little bit more saturated and i've said this on my review or my revisit that it feel uh, sometimes a little bit like radioactive something you will particularly see in the reds they are just a little bit more glowing and so on both aren't really natural in terms of maximum brightness the sony actually wins i measured 680 lux here where i measured 600 but both of them super bright viewing angles I would actually give a little bit to the win to the Samsung, but the IPS glow or the almost non-existent one on the on the Sony is great, even though we don't have any, of course, on the AMOLED display. But I will say both are absolutely great. And for all people who I've seen this in the comments say that they want the 1080p display on such a small device, I absolutely don't think it's necessary. Both are sharp, both are great. I personally, even though I usually prefer AMOLED, actually have to give this one to the Sony. There is just something that is so great about it. Now, sound. Let's start with the speaker of the Sony. Okay. The Samsung might actually sound a little bit louder due to having the chance to reflect. The Sony just doesn't have that one, but I definitely still, I still give the win to the Sony just because it is front-facing stereo. And they sound a little bit, just a little bit nicer, but there's not a big difference. Where it's actually now a head where it wasn't on Marshmallow is the headphone jack, because on Marshmallow it just wasn't loud enough, I didn't like it so much, but now it's way louder, quality has become way better, and even though the Samsung is still good enough, or good, 
this one definitely this time clearly wins so now i have to use my kind of still ghetto comparison setup to get them both in line so we can no i actually have to put the sony on the other side so i can unlock it so this now yeah wait give me a second <laughs> i will just unlock it and then it works okay like i said this is not quite maybe the time efficient review that you usually would like to see but you wouldn't get from me anyways <laughs> okay uh, i actually don't know if the camera was switched to me okay let's get both done and one thing that i actually want to mention in terms of display size this one of course is bigger but it also is not just bigger because it's 0.1 inches bigger but also because you don't have the on-screen button so keep that in mind for videos and so not so important because they will hide away anyways but i did kill all the apps so let's launch a few and see which one is faster and if i'm not completely wrong the sony should win in every regard okay now it doesn't have internet connection that does not count <laughs> That just sometimes happens with the app. But I have to say, and I said this in my review, the Sony is pretty much the fastest device that I've used in a long time. It's super snappy, it's super fast. Of course, it won't always win here, and it, it doesn't have to. But I gotta say, it's an amazing performer. Super snappy, because especially if I wanna switch here, as you can see here with, through my apps, this works so crazy fast where well, it works moderately fast but just not as good in terms of multitasking it also has the upper hand just because it has more ram one gigabyte as we can see the scrolling here let me quickly get that there done wait wait okay both are super nice this one feels a little bit lighter but this one due to amulet feels also super smooth super great but i just like the a little bit lighter appearance of the sony and I will definitely give the Sony the win. I'm not going to try to hide anything here because personally it just feels, as you can see here, so super lightweight, so super smooth. Yes, the scrolling is a little bit blurry due to the IPS display, but you don't have on the Samsung. But in this point, I don't care because this feels so crazy fast and lightweight and so great and just overall so amazing. Now, when it comes down to gaming... I also give the win to the Sony because it just has the better GPU, so it wins here as well. In terms of battery life, though, there's a little bit of a switch because the Sony charges a little bit slower. The, there's like a half an hour difference, if I'm not wrong, if the, if the values didn't change. But the Samsung also gets like, let's say roughly about half an hour of screen on time more. Not enough to break it because both are still good. I've, I think I got like five hours on the Sony where I got five and a half on the Samsung, on mobile data only. So both are very great. If you watch a lot of movies though, and TV shows and YouTube, then I would say the Samsung is the better choice because there it just has the better drain, especially the AMOLED for videos is so great when it comes to drain, so really great here. Now, the next part would be the software, which I don't wanna really get into because that's always a thing that takes so much time because of course you can see quite similar here. We both have a similar launcher. It gets the job done, so you can side scrolling here, both here. So nothing particularly fancy, of course. Quick settings, but of course you have the way more stock Android look here on the Sam's on the Sony instead of, for example, here with the Samsung, which definitely looks quite different. I like both. I have to say this one looks a little bit more modern these times. This seems a little bit dated, a little bit boring to me by now, and the theming engine also isn't quite as capable. But one thing that I have to actually give to Sony is their update policy. They are pretty much the best brand when it comes to updates because I just got an update today and I already have Nougat, which the Samsung is still waiting for. So if you want the faster updates, the more cleaner, more streamlined look, it is the Sony. If you want a little bit more capability and you like the kind of more capable limited, I mean, I mean theming engine, go for the Samsung. Personally, I like the Samsung one more in terms of functionality and so on, but in this case, especially with the Nougat update, Sony made such a huge leap forward. It improved the performance noticeably and everything else just got better. It got more responsive and it's just a way ahead in that regard. Now, in terms of the camera, I wanted to actually show side-by-side -side comparison pictures, but I won't. And the reason is just the following. No matter what I would show, <laughs> And whichever one would win, I would get a flame from one of the other brand's fans that I did something. So I'm just going to tell you what I have seen and either you believe it or not. 
uh, for selfies, the Sony. Way sharper, way better, way more consistent, noticeably better. For pictures, the quality itself, and if you get everything right, and Sony fans definitely notice, the Sony wins. But what I don't like so much about the Sony is that the kind of I, I kind of like to call it the, the the rendering circle of death because whenever you shoot a picture, especially in 23 megapixels, there is this blue circle and it takes so crazy long sometimes to store pictures that it's just so annoying on the Sony. So if you want the more just easy to get pictures, the Samsung here gets my win just because it was a little bit annoying on the Sony. Otherwise. In terms of video, definitely noticeable win as well, again, for the Sony, because it's just way sharper, way better. The zoom fun functions even better and so on. So now let's wrap this up. Design and build. Should I choose a winner? I should, but I, I can't really. Like I said, this feels a little bit more premium, but this is actually more comfortable. So if I would have to side, I think I would actually, even though it maybe isn't, I don't know. I'll give it, especially due to the better fingerprint reader, to the Sony. Display, also Sony. Not that there is a huge difference. It's really marginal. It really actually comes mostly down to what you want. AMOLED or IPS. But even someone like me who prefers an AMOLED gives the win to the Sony because I just like this kind of glow in the colors. They feel so so pleasant to watch it. Super sharp. A little bit sharper than the, so the Samsung feels due to the Penta Matrix and so on. And then sound. Better speaker, not by much, but front facing and the better headphone jack. Performance, also Sony. Noticeably smoother after all, way more consistent, more ramp, so better for multitasking and better gaming performance. This one, for the price, still top, but this one is crazy good by now. Next thing, battery life. Here, the Samsung wins. Not by much, like, let's say half an hour on average on screen on time, at least for me. Software, functionality here. Newer updates and kind of a sleeker, less heavy resource management on the device, Sony. Camera, like I said, selfies, Sony. Pictures, just because not so annoying on the Samsung videos on the Sony. Now, which is the winner? And here I have to actually kind of slightly point out the price. It really comes down to that because... On average, and I can't really judge it wherever you are, but the Sony is slightly more expensive still. At least here it's like, I think, 330 by now here in Euros in Germany. And this one is already available for 290, let's say roughly 300. So this is not by much, but it is a little bit more expensive. But is it worth the $30 over the Samsung? I would definitely say yes, just because it's noticeably faster. And then everything else, like I said, after all, he had won most of the categories. But it really comes down if you like the kind of Samsung software, if you like their camera, if you like AMOLED displays, if you are okay with the speaker and you want it maybe ever so slightly better. Battery life, sure, go for it. Because there's still nothing wrong for this price. But the Sony, even though it's definitely still not cheap with about for 330 euros, it is... And I will give it a title and I've given it in a revisit. It is the best compact phone on the market. And this is pretty much the next best thing. Of course, and some people have pointed out in my revisited review that there are cheaper alternatives. But those are a little bit bigger after all. Because there is something which is kind of my definitely bang for buck highlight. The Xiaomi Redmi 4 Prime. If you want to pay like half of the Sony and get overall very, very good qualities like <laughs> like almost a double of battery life. Camera, of course, isn't that good. The display isn't that good. The speaker isn't that good. But the internet feel is actually even better. And the fingerprint reader can't compete with this one. But for a, for noticeably less money, you get quite a good package. Then there are some other ones like the Huawei Nova. But the Nova for its price, which is also quite close to 330 around, just can't compete with the Sony. So... These are kind of the best two ones, especially since Samsung is still having its reputation, still has the Samsung name, and that's why a lot of people will just prefer it. But between those two, I would, if I would have to pick one, definitely go for the Sony, because especially after the Nougat update, it is just leaps and bounds better what it was already before, which it also already was great. So I don't want to stretch this too far. You got it. And you have to judge. And let me actually know which one you think I was biased towards. Because I got a million from Sony and Samsung. So I'm not quite sure which one I should <laughs> No, but you get it. Have a nice day. Until next time. Bye.